Welcome to the American Dream, a national show set around real estate, lifestyle, and culture, positive media. And today, we're going to Washington, D.C. with Nirit Coombe and Alex Martinez, award-winning realtors. are going to show us all around town and give us some advice. Let's start the show right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial free, unscripted. I got it. These are stories for you and by you. Hi guys, here we are, Nurit and Alex at the American Dream TV show. We are here at Lauberge Francois. This iconic restaurant in Great Falls has been in business for over 60 years. It's our favorite restaurant and we're gonna meet and cook with the chef, Chef Jacques. So let's go and take a look and let's have fun. Alex Marie, welcome. Thanks for coming out to Chef Francois. Oh, thank you for having us. We are so excited to be here with you, Chef Jack. Well, thank you for coming. And again, the French accent is only for the paying customers, by the way. <laughs> We're going to have some fun today. And by the way, the restaurant has been here in this location for 44 years. I wow. was 10 when we, would you believe 12? When we started? <laughs> come on, Alex, give me a break here. Anyway, come on in. Let's have some fun today. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chef Jacques, tell me about the first night and how this restaurant started. The first night, well, Dad had so many loyal patrons from Washington that wanted to be with us on the first day. We had way too many reservations, not nearly enough food. So we got through the first seating, stumbled through the first seating, <laughs> and mercifully, someone's always been looking out for us from up there. A thunderstorm came down the Potomac River there and knocked out the power, and we sent the second seating home without oh, supper. Wow. That, that was our first night here. Uh, that was April 29. 1976. We have, you know, hosted just about everyone you can think of. Uh, we've had every president since Truman, unfortunately not yet the Obamas. We've had congressmen and senators, celebrities, Mick Jagger, for instance, etc. And just plain folks, which are actually our bread and butter, who are out to celebrate a special occasion. So Chef, I know your father, Chef Francois, had started the restaurant uh, in D.C. and he worked here until he was uh, 91 years old 91, and the correct. day before he died he still worked, right? He still worked. Again, in France we say, le travail c'est la santé. Working keeps you alive, keeps you young and fit and uh, the good food didn't hurt anything and a little <laughs> glass of wine was probably oh, <laughs> medicinal as well, only for medicinal purposes. The whole place is the Alsatian decor, but this is a very personal Herringer memorabilia type of decor. We have line drawings from my grandfather. We have cloth that my father bought from Alsace as well, and all line drawings, pictures of our hometown, of Auvergnat. And what we're trying to do is bring the Alsatian tradition where we think it's the best food in France and bringing those traditions here. And you use a lot of fresh vegetables and um, I guess... Oh, everything, absolutely. So, yeah. And we have a big garden. I also heard that there is a beautiful garden out there and I've, let's go and check that out. Let's it's let me show it to you. I'm really proud of the everything. garden. I love talking to my vegetables, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see it. Let's go. So we're here at this incredible garden. There is nothing like taking from this garden to the table. So can you tell us all about it? I certainly can. We're very proud of our gardens. 
the summer produce is starting to wane and now we have the cabbages and kohlrabis and lettuces that will be starting planting and then about five years ago after way too much wine I decided that this was way too small so we have a garden that's four <laughs> times as large up there and you're doing <laughs> compost right here right we are we are using all the leaves we're doing eggshells coffee grounds we're doing some composting so it's really wonderful it's peaceful there's nothing like coming out here in the evening Absolutely. and talking to the vegetables Thank you so much for having us over. We felt right at home, sincerely. This has been an amazing experience. Great pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming out, and I know you'll enjoy lunch. I'll be checking to make sure. <laughs> Absolutely, we will. So the next part, we're going to meet Cherise Jackson Jordan from the Real House Rice of Potomac. We all know her. We're going to have lunch right here at this restaurant and enjoy it. So let's go. And voila, tomato salad from the garden with our homemade vinaigrette. Enjoy. That looks nice good. You. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Hi, Cherise. Hi. It's so fun to have you here. I was looking forward for this lunch with you. I'm really excited and I'm here with Alex. Good to see you, Cherise. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So I guess more of anything, tell us a little bit of how do you get involved with the Housewives of Potomac, which is, to me, quite a story. Well, actually, it's kind of weird. I thought it was a joke. The guy calls me up and he's like, hey, Cherise, um, I want to talk to you about doing this reality show. We're looking for an ensemble of women. And I thought it was my friend, Andre, playing a trick on me. I get ready for the Skype interview and I'm like, oh, you're not Andre. And he was like, no, I'm Adrian, Andre's brother. And I'm like, oh my God. I personally, at the moment, was not interested in doing it. So I said, I'll help you cast the show. Then there's this one spot, and they were like, well, you're like the glue to this whole thing. So, you know, the spot should be for you. And I'm like, oh, no, no, we can get one more person. But it ended up being me. So that's how it started. Doing the show was kind of weird because I knew nothing about reality TV. But one thing I did learn is that you should never tell them your fears or what you don't like, because those are the things you have to deal with. Like, for example, I don't swim. So what do they have me do? Jet skiing in the middle of the ocean. And you know, so I'm like, jet skiing, jet oh. skiing in the middle of the ocean. You did something was really, really fun. I just, um, I never knew about it. It's right here in Virginia. You did the cryotherapy. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> yes, cryotherapy. I had no idea yet again what I was getting myself into, but this thing, you're at freezing temperatures. It's like minus 200 Oh degrees. my God, you're just like, you do my teeth are chittering. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> you know? And then they wanna have a conversation with you and they're like, okay, how much time has it been? How much time has it been? Yeah. But and, it was kind of cool though. It's a therapy that it's good for cleans you. the body. Cleans the body, helps you with your joints. And it's supposed to be refreshing. for you. I know there's a lot of things that you're doing and mm -hmm. uh, you've been doing. So tell us yeah. about it. <laughs> I was supposed to be doing a comedy tour. I did this thing. There's Caroline's in New York, which is like a major comedy stage. Comedy. Oh right. my God. They're like, okay, Sharice, we need you to do 15 minutes. I, I go through the whole thing and then the people at Caroline's was like, let her go. I went for like almost 30 minutes. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. And they laugh the whole time. So you see, she's got, she's full of personality. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. What the f you broke up with me before I could even ask her to go on a damn date. <laughs> what else keeping you busy these days? Well, Fortunately, my kids are home, and yeah, I'm very fortunate. Um, they're doing online schooling. Uh, my daughter, she's studying to be a doctor, so I can't help her. But my son, I'm helping him now. He's wanting to be a model. I've been wanting him to be a model for a while. So we're embarking on that. should be. So you have, you know, your house is sold in tribunal, mm -hmm. and right now you're in between stages. Your house in Tribunal has many, many features. Uh, there was the champagne room. You want to say oh. words about that? Don't talk about the <laughs> champagne room. I had to leave the champagne room. That's the only thing I really miss about the house. It was very intimate. It was something that I have this house. The kids are going off to college. And it's like, 
can I have one room to myself that reflects who I am? <laughs> so I took, it was a study, and I said, uh, I love champagne, so I turned it into a champagne room. Today, we're gonna to take you to a new townhouse. It's, it's, it's quite large, it's a brand new development, mm -hmm. uh, very, very luxurious, very high-end. So I'm looking forward we'll, to it. We'll have lunch, and then we'll go and take a look. Welcome, welcome, my realtor to the stars and a star. Welcome to our Logan. Warmold Homes actually started up the street with Robert Sr. building the first Warmold home. Now his sons proudly take over the company. We are a local builder, we're family owned, and we're known for our architecture. The design is so, the exterior fits so well in here. Well, that is exactly why Wormald was selected. Ken Wormald is our architect. We mimicked the limestone and stucco from the condominiums in a beautiful townhome with a lot of detail, reminiscent of a lot of European architecture. And then the inside, as you can see, can be as modern and open and flexible as you'd like. So by design, because of our design, we were selected to build here. What we're looking at, what we're walking through, is actually a study downstairs, mm -hmm. three bedrooms on the bedroom level, and then our rooftop terrace. We are showing our signature Four Seasons retreat, and that is a treat. We had you in mind when we created the Four Seasons ret retreat. In this space, you can entertain literally year round. We are indoor outdoor space with our retractable shades and screens and walls that open up to the outside. I'm going from a champagne room to a champagne lounge. <laughs> that sounds perfect as long as you remember who your friends are in the neighborhood. <laughs> and you're always welcome. Great pleasure, Rhonda. Absolute fun to spend time with you, Sharice, today. And thank you, everybody, for watching the American Dream TV show. See you next time for more lifestyle and real estate in the Washington area. Well, that looked like a fun day out there in Washington, D.C. Now, we're going to show you an interview. We were able to sit down with Nareet and Alex. These two are number one in Washington, D.C. for great reason. They are a wealth of knowledge. Let's see what they had to say about the market. It's always fun going around town with Nareet Kuhn and Alex Martinez, award-winning realtors out of the D.C. marketplace. But if you're like me and you want to know how do I accomplish my American dream of homeownership, specifically in an area like D.C., well, we got to pin these guys down and, and learn a little bit about the actual real estate market. So good to have you guys again. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys show us the lifestyles and the stories, and it, it makes everybody want to get to know that market a little bit better. Tell us about what's actually happening in D.C. real estate. All housing markets are local. Neary, who would have thought with this COVID situation the housing market would be on fire? What do things look like from you on the front line? So it's interesting because sometimes everything falls together and makes an explosive market. <laughs> and this is really what happened here. So interest rates was, were low, but they're still even lower now than they were last year, which is amazing. Um, inventory. So what happened with the pandemic? Um, so many people did not want to put their house on the market, did not want to have people coming in and touching their doors and, and all that stuff and cabinets. So they didn't feel comfortable people coming into their house, so they're not listing their house. So elderly are not ready to move because they're afraid to get out of their house. So a lot of the segments of the market is not there and we have less listings because of it. But the demand is still there, rates are low, we have tons of buyers and, uh, and, and 
psychologically also this pandemic changed people how we think yeah <laughs> right suddenly we so much value our house and we if we didn't like the kitchen now we really can't stand it uh we don't yeah. order from restaurants as much or go out as much we're more at home we all need uh, an office maybe two or three offices because we need a husband and wife we need kids a place for homeschooling uh, backyard became so crucial. Pool is, you can't even schedule with pool companies. It's, they're so busy right now. So oh, really? all this created this demand. Um, and then many times with my clients, we sit down and we say, okay, well, do we renovate or we uh, move to a new house? And it's a really, really good question because you can spend $200,000, do an addition and, and, and get the money out of your pocket and do that. So if it's the right house, the right location, you love where you are, you love in the neighborhood, the streets, sure, maybe. But sometimes you may be over improving. Sometimes it's better to take, to pay $200,000 more in sell price over 30 years at that low interest rate mm -hmm. and just move to a better situation. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's crazy the flurry of activity this pandemic has created when you weave in low interest rates, which let's be clear, are a byproduct of the pandemic. It, that fear in the market has flooded money into bonds that causes bond prices to move up and their yields to move down. We're talking about mortgage rates like in the twos. I mean, it's insane. So insane. if you were, yeah, if you're looking at renovating versus buying that new home, it'd be one thing if you're talking about a five, six, seven, eight percent, but when you're talking about a two and a half percent, and you, and you equate that to a payment, I mean, just, it's it's insane. You, I don't think anyone would have ever predicted, well, of course, nobody would have pre predicted COVID, but the response in real estate is, to me, is just absolutely incredible. So Alex, let me ask you, we're going into the fourth quarter, we got holidays, we got an election. How does that stuff impact? I know you don't have a crystal ball, but give us your, your best guess here. Absolutely. So more of anything, I, I don't know if you know this, but traditionally 20% of all homes sell during the holidays. Uh, to be very honest with you, we're in an area where it's a, an area that is technically a recession-proof recession area because we have so much going on. We're in Washington, D.C., so we have so many people moving in and out of the area. Uh, we, when we saw the crash back in 2007, 2006, we were very, no, we're not affected very much just because of, you know, the consistency that we have among our area. We have embassies, we have uh, NIH here, we have a lot of good things here in our area. So to be very, very honest with you, if we needed to predict the future, I can tell you that I can only see the rates staying as low as they have been. Uh, I can see that elections are coming up and we're going to see a lot of movement in our area. And the people who have missed the, uh, the market just because there's been a low inventory, they're still out there and they're serious buyers. So they're still looking to purchase something. They're looking to acquire something so that they, we haven't seen that slowdown that we, you know, we usually see once kids go back to school, pe people are still very active out, out there. So just to predict it, I'll say that we're going to remain very strong. I, I'll predict that the rates are going to stay the way they are. And we're going to see huge, huge if, 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 you know, movement of real estate in our area. It's almost like all of these outside forces, whether it's the pandemic or an election, they, they're forcing this flurry of activity. What that activity is really just depends. It depends on where you are. I, I said this the last time we sat down together, and I'll probably say it every time we sit down together. <laughs> Launching the American Dream all across the country, I had the opportunity to visit all of these cities I've never even been to before. I live in San Diego, California. Love it here. But if there's a city that I would move to, there's a couple, Washington, D.C. would be one of them because it's such a great area. So no matter what those outside forces are, you have this fundamental, uh, this, this, this place that's great for families, it's great for move-up buyers. You have your luxury markets. I know you guys sell a lot of luxury real estate as well. And let me ask you that about Neri. Are you seeing a different result in, in the higher price points or is it pretty similar there as well? Yeah, pretty similar. So if ever higher price range market or higher upper brackets have been uh, strongest than ever, actually, uh, people are willing to spend that kind of money and able to jump to that price range because of the rates. Yeah. So um, it's 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 a better, easier, closer for them to to get to that goal right now. Let me talk to the other side of the equation here with sellers. So you're in this market now. You're getting multiple offers. How do we approach our list price? How do we approach marketing it? What do you need to do to market it? So I guess I just say, what would be your advice to sellers right now? Let's start with you, Nareed, again. 
So, you know, this is a golden opportunity. We have captive audience. We have people at home that are inching and, and really wanted to, to find a new house and they're available, they're online all day long. So marketing right now is key on how to reach out to the clients and internet and, and also nationwide, like through your show, for example, where we do that for nationwide, but um, uh, having an, a strong online presence and not just an online presence, but also TV commercials, also um, Google and through display ads and Facebook and FaceTime and all these things that we do that are very, very important because we got these clients available looking right now and we can approach them. Um, we do geofencing marketing. Um, we do to, to reach the, the specific clients in your area that are right now driving around and looking. Um, so there's so many technologies for us to be able to use. And uh, when we have the great videos, the great um, um, uh, 3D tours and pictures and all that stuff, it's great that we have it. Now, how do we put it in front of your face as a buyer? That's really important. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Alex, what advice would you have to sellers? Everything we do, uh, every, uh, the marketing plan that we uh, you know, create for every listing is, is tailored to, to a specific, you know, uh, sellers and, and to their needs and, and, and just to try to capture that audience. But a lot of the success has come with us, you know, starting all this marketing uh, before the property goes live on the market. So that's creating that momentum. As soon as the property goes on the market, we already have people lining up on that property because there is so much interest that will yield a multiple offer situation. And, you know, of course, getting a lot more than what they thought that they were going to be able to proceed for the property. So just doing all that heavy lifting ahead of time. And, and once it goes live, it's, it's pretty much a sold property. And I will yep. say one more thing. One last thing I would mention, if you don't mind. Um, you know, every, houses do sell right now, right? So as sellers will ask, well, do you need to do all that marketing? Yes, because it's the golden opportunity to get really highest price you can ever imagine. Sure. So it's important. I, I, I this morning I heard of uh, a friend of mine whose home is for sale here, median price, and he's got 30 offers. Some <laughs> of them are above listing price. Some of them are cash buyers above listing price, which means that deal ain't falling through. There's no appraisal financing issues. So you, of course, you have to market it like that because the difference between one offer and another might be a higher price, but it also might be that cash buyer or a more confident finance deal, which is so important. So great advice here today. I, I love when you guys sit down with us, you show us all around town and you actually give us some advice to make rubber meet the road. And here's my thought. If you're having a challenge finding inventory, it's probably because Nareet and Alex's team have all the inventory. So just go to them. <laughs> probably got the homes on the market for you. Thanks, Alex and Nareet. Love having you on the show. Thank you for empowering the American dream of home ownership in DC. More of the show coming up next. So now the question becomes, you love Washington, D.C., you love the area, you got some advice, well, how much can you afford? What are the properties out there? What's the inventory? Nareen and Alex have some of the best inventory on the marketplace, so we wanted to show some of that to you today. Let's go check out some of their top properties. One Stony Creek Way is an exceptional brick and stone front colonial offering a private backyard retreat bordered by mature trees and a picturesque creek. With over 6,200 square feet of living space, this spectacular five bedroom home has been updated and upgraded throughout and offers a dramatic two story marble foyer, gleaming hardwood floors, detailed crown molding, heated bathroom floors, and more. The updated gourmet kitchen has Brazilian cherry cabinetry, high end appliances, a large center island, and an adjacent breakfast room. The large open family room features a massive stone fireplace, a convenient wet bar, and easy access to the sprawling deck. Check out this sumptuous, fully renovated master suite with French doors to the balcony overlooking the pool and the spacious spa-like master bath with heated floors and a skylight. A large lower level recreation room offers a kitchenette and sliding door access to the backyard. 
your family will love the ultimate resort retreat, offering a heated swimming pool, a hot tub, multiple stone patios, and an expansive wood deck with awnings. There's no doubt about it, one Stony Creek Way is the perfect place to call home. Love with this modern arts and crafts home offering 5,000 square feet of luxurious living in the sought after neighborhood of Alta Vista Gardens. No expense has been spared in this five bedroom home offering upscale living and entertaining spaces over three finished levels, as well as a spectacular backyard oasis. The Gourmet Chef's Kitchen showcases an abundance of amenities from high-end GE stainless steel appliances to granite countertops to modern soft clothes cabinetry and a large center island with a breakfast bar. The adjacent light-filled family room features a coffered ceiling, built-in cabinetry, an oversized gas fireplace, and glass doors opening to the screened-in porch. Upstairs, you'll find a sumptuous master suite with his and her walk-in closets and a spa-like master bath showcasing a Kohler jetted soaking tub. The expansive lower level offers a recreation room with a built-in wet bar, a bonus exercise room, and a fifth bedroom with an attached full bath. Take the ultimate staycation in the stunning backyard oasis offering a full-service, state-of-the-art outdoor kitchen, a pergola with Sonos surround sound, and a three-season screened-in porch addition equipped with a projection screen and infrared heaters. Located in minutes from an abundance of shopping, dining, and entertaining options, this thoughtfully designed home provides you the perfect space to live your best life. Welcome to this updated, spacious, five-bedroom split level in the desirable Park View neighborhood. This light-filled home features numerous upgrades and designer touches over four finished levels, including gleaming hardwood floors, recessed lighting, and oversized windows. The main level of 4524 Tremor Street features a spacious living room with a dramatic vaulted ceiling, a formal dining room, and a modern updated kitchen with quartz countertops, white cabinetry, and walkout access to the large yard. This home offers 3,000 square feet of light-filled living space in an expansive, fully fenced, and professionally landscaped backyard with a flagstone patio and fire pit. Located minutes from downtown Bethesda and within walking distance to Medical Center Metro, this home is perfect for family living and entertaining. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The American Dream. It's always fun to host this. I was your host today, Craig Sewing, but also the creator of the show. And I encourage you to follow us at The American Dream TV. Hope you enjoyed the show on DC. Until next time, cheers to your American Dream. Thank <laughs> you.